Hi, I'm James Morris from Witch EV and we're here at the BBC Television Centre, which is no longer uh, occupied by the BBC. It is occupied by this beautiful uh, car. Um, I'm, I'm here with Paolo. Yes, uh, first of all, uh, it's a pleasure to be here in London. Uh, what we have here is the Battista, uh, which is the first vehicle to be developed and uh, produced from Pininfarina. It's an electric hypercar, so will be fully electric. And the configuration that we see here is the, what we call the more special one, is what we call the Anniversario. Basically, a bespoke version that has been designed for the 19th anniversary of Pininfarina, uh, which comes with even a more beautiful look on the exterior and the interior. Great, so can you tell us about the specification of this car? Yes, uh, the car is fully electric. It comes with an enormous amount of power, 1900 horsepower and 2300 newton per meter total torque. Uh, is basically composed by an e-power train 800 volts, which has a big battery uh, providing 120 kilowatt hour total. Uh, and of course, the acceleration is stunning so 0 to 100 in less than 2 seconds, 200 in less than 6 seconds, and 0 to 300 in less than 12 seconds. And above all, I would say it will be as fast and on a straight road as together it will be quite fast also on cornering. So if you drove this car like a pussycat, how far do you reckon it would go? Well, uh, Which is obviously not what you're going to do, but... The range will be, I would say, an important, I would say, fact for all our customers. So we have designed a battery that can allow us to have a 500 kilometer range in WLTP site, which is basically also in customer use, always providing a substantial, very good range. And after that, uh, we have fast charging, so the car can charge quite fastly, uh, 20 to 80 percent status of charge of the battery in around 25 minutes. So and um, what, what about if you drive this like a nutter around a, uh, a racing track? How long would you be able to drive it before you need to go and use that fast well, charging? Well, just to give you a figure, even when you are uh, driving at 200 kph, you can still drive more than 230 kilometers right. overall. So it's still, I would say, quite a lot, even if you're going fast on a German autobahn or you're going on a track. Because obviously, you know, if you drive on a track, you know, this is one of the problems with electric cars. Not very many electric cars uh, 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 tracks have electric charging anyway, but you know you can get like uh, 20, 30 minutes before you need to go to a, uh, uh, a charger. I would say that uh, when you're driving on a lap, uh, given the power of the Battista, I would say range will be, I would say, least of a problem. So tell us a little bit about the history of uh, Pin Farina. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. We have a, yes. You're Italian, we have an Italian cameraman, yes. and uh, I'm probably mincing the Italian language. Well, uh, Pininfarina is, I would say, the brand that has designed some of the most beautiful cars in the past 90 years. And, and uh, some, some, for, for British, British viewers, you know, even things like there's a, a, a classic Rover SD1. That was yes, a no, no, not only Italian design. cars, yeah. al also English cars, some Swedish cars. Uh, so I would say some French ma ones. many automakers did uh, beautiful cooperation with, uh, with Pininfarina, starting from the Battista, the founder, yep. uh, and, then, and, and then I would say the, the family, still continuing the family business. Uh, and I would say as Automobili Pininfarina, what is our aim is to bring to the road and to develop and produce the first car that actually is having the Pininfarina logo also on the center of the vehicle, not only at the side, like it has been for many years up to now. Uh, and basically bringing this heritage in a fully Pininfarina vision, uh, coupling this with the e-mobility and the sustainability, the, 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 sustain the, the, the vision of, I would say, a sustainable luxury that we strongly believe it can be coupled together. So, I mean, picking up on that point, you know, some of the, uh, the hypercar, supercar manufacturers um, haven't made that, that step into um, all electric. You know, McLaren, quite infamously, you know, even Ferrari, they're, they're going for the hybrid drivetrains, um, but very few have gone all electric. What's, what made um, Pennefarina to uh, uh, take that strategy? 
I would say a combination of two things. First of all, our, I would say, possibility to be free, not having an ICE legacy as Pininfarina, because Pininfarina had been mainly a design and, and coach builder. But I would say mostly when we are thinking about the future is about the electric technology which allows you to increase overall the level of performance of the car. You can design a vehicle, I would say, with many more degrees of freedom. You can shape the battery according to the design of the car and how you want to, I would say, play with the center of gravity uh, of the vehicle. And above all, I would say, however, the e powertrain and the system voltage with the, our decision of having four independent motors, basically this allow you to have the ideal trajectory, uh, which basically results in the fact that the car is, I would say, has a devastating longitudinal acceleration, but is even more devastating when you're cornering. Because that traction control can really yes, put the power because, down because through individual you, wheels. You, you can deliver the torque in, in really an instant, from to any wheels without no transmission, no clutch, no loss of energy and in I would say so short time that the car can be extremely effective even on a track. Although as we said we won't end it to be the Batista an hypercar but still with a GT flavor on it to be so you could go shopping in it if you wanted to we'd like to our <laughs> customer to go shopping why I not I don't think we'd be inspect we'd be inspecting the boot size uh, at, at any point during this interview so now that in contrast to my previous question there are some hypercar manufacturers who are producing uh, cars in this class I'm going to come to the um, the biggest elephant in the room towards uh, uh, after this question but you know there's Lotus and there's yes. also Remac um, do you have relationships with those, those manufacturers? Yes, uh, RIMAC is, uh, is our partner. Uh, yep. for, uh, together with RIMAC, actually, we have developed uh, a lot of the technology that is uh, in, the, in the heart of the Batista. So we, 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 we love cooperating with them. And nevertheless, of course, uh, I would say starting from utilizing uh, common technology, we then, I would say, uh, diverted into developing our own interpretation of, uh, of the hypercar. As said, we want it to be a GT, usable every day. Uh, of course, I would say design is basically at the art of our heritage, at the art of our company. But design also comes uh, with, I would say, the function. In exterior it can be aerodynamics, in the interior it's a lot about ergonomics and I would say life on board of the vehicle. So, um, how much is this car? You mean price? Price wise, yeah. <laughs> okay. Starting I've got my checkbook with me, so I'm yeah, just going to yeah. place a... Uh, I would say starting from uh, around 2 million and then the anniversary, a little bit more, uh, around 2.5. Just a little bit. Yes, uh, I would say definitely anyway worthful. So, um, have you sold them all already? Uh, we have, I would say, a lot of traction on our sales. Uh, we have just started our European roadshow because for us it's important to get the customer in the car and I would say get the customer into our family. So perhaps you should mention the sales partner in the, in the UK and what yes, that relationship Yes, which is Jardin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in a couple of days we will move to Goodwood. To that elephant in the room, this car is going to come out, it's going to be 2 to 2.5 million pounds. And then in theory, in a year or so's time, the Tesla Roadster is going to arrive with an, an unparalleled paralleled level of performance for much less money. What would you say is the, uh, how, how are you going to combat that? Very easily. Uh, as we say, as many, uh, I believe that uh, Tesla would say open up the process. Uh, nevertheless, uh, we don't think Tesla is, a, is a, at any way a competitor to Automobili Pininfarina. We are, I would say, doing quite different things. The point is how you combine that level of performance with the overall, I would say, attributes. Let's take a look inside. Yes, yes please. So can you guide me through the, the various um, elements of this? So you've got a 
your steering wheel obviously here, yes, uh, got a few functions on there, you've got some panels, this little panel here. Yeah. I will explain to you, I would say everything starts from the vision from our design team to develop something which was really driver oriented. So basically you have the display all around you. The central one is the smaller one, but it's supposed the one uh, that you look actually mostly, so it will be the speedometer yep. plus the cruise control function. So unlike a Tesla Model 3, it actually has the speed in front of you. Right, and because that's basically what you need to know. Also because being an electric car, RPM is not so important because there is no gear shift. Then the left display is basically the vehicle dynamics control display. So it's basically where when you select the drive mode, you see the status of the car, much more information can come. And you can also have, you have one of the drive mode, which is called character that it can be bespoke. You can adjust the yep. calibration of the software in that specific drive mode. The right uh, screen uh, instead is for the infotainment. Yep. And, uh, so Be sat nav if you actually <laughs> need yeah. to know where you're going. Uh, so there is radio, navigation, and then basically all of those are touch and then you have physical switch which are the two main one are the two rotary controls yeah the one on the yes the one on the right that you were just using is for the gear selector yeah and the one on the left is for the drive mode selector and yep. the launch mode so um this car has five different modes five yes and there so, is yeah, go yeah. On. there is basically calma which is uh the one i would say to go lower and uh, to go slower and of course while going slower and be i would say very i would say smooth especially for city driving is also the one that is maximizing uh, the, the the reduction of the energy of the energy use then there is pura which stand i would say for the normal drive mode energica is a sport driving mode and finally furiosa is the what you could call sport plus driving mode yeah. so really the one for the track use, actually, there is a disclaimer, so when you have to put Furios, actually, you have to confirm it. Does that, does that take off things like traction control? Can you do, um, uh, can you do burnouts and, uh, and donuts in this car? I would say yes, potentially. Uh, we still always keep torque vectoring, also in Furiosa. Then yes, I would say we reduce the intervention of the ESP, but basically to a level that still the car as always has to be safe and proper and finally the fifth driving mode is called character which is basically the one by which you can change the setting yep. of, of the calibration so let's have a look, little look around the car first of all i wanted to have a look at these brakes down here um can you tell us about the brakes you've got here yes we have carbo ceramic brakes front and rear uh, this is i would say a co-development done with our main partner brembo uh, by the way, it's uh, kind of, I would say, Formula One technology, so a material which is very stiff, light, in a way, uh, providing us a high friction stability, which combined to the regeneration that we have from the electric powertrain, uh, is even overall giving outstanding performance, also in braking. So, speaking of braking, is this just a spoiler or is it actually an aero brake? No, no, it's, uh, it, it, it is actually, it has more functionalities. So it's basically providing downlift forces according to the speed and the drive mode, but it has a position which is actually the same one we see here, where yes, when you are slowing down from high speed, it activates as a high brake. So not only increasing the aid, but also the angle and the inclination. Because the Bugattis have those, don't they, the aero brakes yes, on the... Yes, um... it's similar, and when you're going so fast, like you do sometimes on an hypercar, it's a good thing to have. Okay, so explain about the aerodynamics of the yes, car. Yes, uh, starting from the fact that it's an electric vehicle. By definition, this allows to have less, I would say, critical aspects rather than an IC, and overall it's more efficient because you have to dissipate less thermal energy. Starting from that, yes, we have, I would say, different intakes in the front, if you see them. Uh, there are three main ones, which are basically going to two radiator and two condenser, which are to cool down the battery and the inverter. There are also intakes for the brakes, which are the small yep. one that you see here. Yep. And then air curtains to improve drag. Uh, we have other uh, one radiator and condenser in the, in the back to, to, to cool the rear inverter. Which, 
and then basically all the car has been designed to, I would say, optimize drag versus lift force. Uh, the shape of the car itself, especially on this side, is basically done in a way that part of the airflow is given to the, to the, to the condenser and the radiator. And what's the kind uh, of top speed you're going to get out of it? It's 350 kph, which is electronically limited, and uh, so it's also quite fast. Yeah, because if it went any faster, it would just be dangerous, right? Well, uh, I would say, theoretically, uh, the car could be faster. Uh, we believe that for the, I would say, GT usage that we want to provide, 350 is definitely more than enough. And uh, you never know what we will do in the future. So how do you, how do you open the, the door and the, yes, the charge board this car? Uh, I'll show you for the door. It's a nice feature. And by the way, it's typical of many Pininfarina car of the past that the handle is not feasible. So it's basically here. Actually, it's very reachable, but not visible. So the design stays nice yeah. and it's here. So it's very easy to access, but you, you cannot have to push see it. it. You have to push it up a little bit yes. yourself. Though. So how do you open this charge port here? Oh, very easy. Just push pull. And this is how it is. And that is a standard CCS charge port, which is a very weird thing to see on a 2 million, 2.5 million pound car. But it's good to see standards. So what's, oh, what, is the, what is the fastest you can charge this on DC? In DC, up to 180 kilowatt fast yep. charging, which is a lot. Basically, it, uh, it allows you to charge the car from 20 to 80% status of charge in around 25 minutes. So um, when can I go for a drive in one? Yes, why not? Yeah. <laughs> that, that would be a good idea. So, you, and you're yeah, going to lend it to me for, for, for a week, right? To uh, a normal test drive. If Dan allows me, why not? <laughs> Great. Um, thank, thank you very much. We've been with Witch EV. Thank you very much, Paolo, for your, your uh, excellent um, you explanation. So if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.